Hey guys, my name is Mili and this is my Nova year. Hey guys, my name is Mili and this is my first video starting of my Nova year. After watching Hannah Louise Poston's videos of her 2018 Nova year, I was extremely inspired to do something like this of my own. In fact, I was actually thinking of doing 2018 as a very low buy year, so just buying one thing per month. I completely failed at it and I definitely bought more than one thing per month. So that kind of didn't work for me. And I decided to follow Hannah's approach and go cold turkey into a replacement only no buy. So I want to divide this video into three different parts. First of all, what am I doing and why am I doing it? The second thing is what I'll be allowed to buy and what I'll not be allowed to buy and the third part will be the things that I'm planning to achieve. So without further ado, let's get into the video. There are four reasons that I decided to go on a no buy. The first reason is I want to examine my materialism, my consumption and my relationship with shopping. Now, I've never really been a huge, huge spender simply because I didn't have the means. But every small disposable income that I had, I spent buying clothes, makeup, books, this kind of stuff. So in a way, I know that I overconsume or buy way too much. And the problem with me is that I buy when I'm happy, but I also buy when I'm sad and I also shop when I'm bored. The problem with shopping is that it has become a crutch in uncomfortable situations. So when I'm in a new place and I don't feel very comfortable, I go shopping because it calms me down. When I'm with new people, I can just go shopping with them because that also makes me feel calm. So it's absolutely not a reasonable thing the way that I feel and I definitely want to examine my relationship with shopping and the way that I feel. The second thing is that shopping has absolutely influenced my relationships. I cannot say that people haven't noticed that I over shop because that would be a disservice to the close ones around me. Uh, a lot of people, including my best friend, my parents, my boyfriend, they have all made some sort of remarks that perhaps I am buying things that I don't need, that I'm overspending, I'm over, sh over consuming, shopping way too much. And yeah, they're right. I mean, there is nothing that I can say that they are right. But it took me a very, very long time to admit this to myself and to realize that they are in fact not trying to blame me. For something but they're trying to point out a problem that they actually have. So shopping way too much has influenced a lot of my relationships but most importantly the one with my boyfriend because we currently are lucky to live in quite a large flat compared to our previous ones but still most of the space is simply cluttered with my stuff. I have a huge closet full of things that I wear but I just have too much. And I also sell items on eBay, so I have between 100 and 200 items that I'm currently selling that are also in our bedroom. And it has become this like huge, huge clutter that makes him feel bad to be at our home. And it makes me feel bad because he doesn't feel home at our home. And because he's been very vocal about this, sometimes I feel like I have to hide my shopping, which is definitely a sign that... I was ashamed of what I was doing, but I didn't want to confront it. So yeah, I decided to go on a no buy, most importantly, to save my relationship. The third and very important reason is to tackle my finances. Now, despite considering myself to be a, quite a smart person, I'm actually very dumb when it comes to finances. I am not financially responsible and I want to change that in 2019. My mom is an extremely financially aware person and I want to be more like her in terms of investing, buying property, saving and still having disposable income to spend on things that you like. So I definitely need to change my relationship with money and be able to save some. Now, before you say anything, I buy most of my stuff pre-loved so I don't spend a lot of money on a single item but the overall amount that I've spent in the last year or two years has been equally huge because I, when I'm thrifting I buy stuff for £5 there, £10 here and it all adds up when you buy 10 different things for £5 it's the same as buying one £50 item, right? So 
In a way, it's even worse because I'm also creating clutter and reducing my disposable income. The other aspect of finances is that a few times I have been into debt to my friends. I don't own a credit card currently and I'm not planning to get one until I feel I can handle it. But I have borrowed money from my friends to pay for things such as my food shopping and petrol. It really made me feel very very bad when I was in a shop and I really wanted to buy a jumper but I knew that I have to choose between the jumper and buying dinner and I never want to feel like this again because that's not a normal thing. The fourth reason is more of a new one but in 2018 I transitioned from being just a fashion blogger to being a sustainable fashion blogger. I learned a lot about fast fashion, carbon footprint and a lot of the ethical implications of buying too much. So I definitely want to challenge my consumption in order to reduce my overall impact and inspire people to get more out of the clothes that they already own. So one thing that Hannah said really really resonated with me and that was the need to find stuff to want. The thing is when you really want something it's gonna be on top of your head constantly and you won't be able to actually stop thinking about it. But after acquiring something I found myself that well I'm happy sometimes for half a day, sometimes it can last for up to a day and then I'm going to go and just like look for something else to want. I sometimes deliberately browse websites to just find something else to want because honestly there's nothing that I need. I have like every color jumper and every color top, I don't need another one. But it's always nice to have something that you want but it also just perpetuates a cycle of like overconsumption. So this is something that I no longer want to be part of. Okay, now to the second part about the things that I will be allowed to buy and things that I'm not going to buy. Let's start with the things that I'm not going to be buying in 2019. First off is obviously clothes. I'm not going to purchase a single item of clothing. And even though before filming this video I thought that okay, I'll allow myself to replace my basic white t-shirt or my black trousers, I'm not gonna do that because I have other white t-shirts and black trousers that will make two in 2019. Second thing is shoes. I have over 30 pairs, I don't need any more. Coming from that is bags, accessories, scarves, anything like that. I have more than enough, so I'm not gonna purchase anything like this in 2019. Then is makeup and skincare. When it comes to skincare, I don't really purchase that much anyway, only the essentials, but I'm not gonna buy any like funky creams or anything just to try like scrubs, things like that. When it comes to makeup, I am not gonna buy any of the like fun or color cosmetics, so eyeshadows, lipsticks, blushes, or makeup tools such as brushes. I'm just not going to buy any of that because I have way too much and I want to use it up. Next thing is perfumes. I have currently five that are kind of two-thirds full and I want to use at least one or two of them up by the end of the year. Next are books, stationery and magazines. And you know like for me the biggest kind of thrill comes from actually looking for those things, not actually from owning them or using them. So I have probably more than enough books to last me throughout the year and if I just want to have a new book I'll go to the library and borrow one. Next thing that I didn't really think about but after watching Hannah's video I think it's actually important to add is home decor and homeware because when I'm not allowed to buy myself the things that I mostly want to buy so clothes, makeup and books I know myself that I'll turn into home decor and I don't want to do that because yes my my home could use a lot of nice decorations but it's also perfectly fine without it and if I really want something I can try to make it myself. Next is electronics so stuff like new computer, new camera, new lens. I know that I am prone to wanting to improve my stuff but I'm not going to do any of that because what I have is fine. Of course, if something gets stolen, then yes, I will need to replace it because I need it for my work, but 
Besides that, I'm not planning on purchasing any electronics. Next thing that I've not seen actually anyone talk about is e-products, maybe because people don't buy that, but I, I like buying online courses, I like buying e-books, but the problem with that is that I never actually use them or I never actually finish them. So in 2019, I'm planning to finish all the courses that I've paid a lot of money for and not buying anything new until I finish them. Finally, this is something that I wanted to add just overall to change my consumption and that is of buying pre-packaged food, whether that is takeaway coffee, that's bottled water, or it's kind of unhealthy stuff like crisps and chocolate. I'm not going to forbid myself from eating unhealthy foods overall, but I just have to make them myself at home. Now onto things that I will be allowing myself to buy. First of all, starting with the essentials, so like rent, phone bill, general electricity bills, I just have to pay that to survive, so there is no bypassing that. The next thing is toiletries, like shampoo, conditioner, micellar water, just basic toiletry stuff. Again, I will try to have only one of a single item and not have like five different shampoos like I sometimes do. Next, uh, we come to skincare and makeup. I'm only allowing myself to replace those items after I've used every single one item of this kind that I have. So for example, if I want to replace my moisturizer, that's fine, but I have to make sure that I have either used or got rid of all the other small sample size moisturizers that I have. So it's going to take me a while before I need to buy a new moisturizer. When it comes to makeup, it's very very similar. I currently have probably two or three foundations that are almost empty, but not really. So I'll force myself to use it up or get rid of it before buying anything new, because there's literally no point in having like five different foundations that just expire. Now, I have a few kind of special items that don't fit into any category that I want to purchase in 2019. First thing is a phone. I have actually saved the money for a phone a long time ago. I was ready to buy it in September 2018, but the phone that I wanted hasn't actually come up yet. So I saved the money and the moment the phone is available to buy, I will because I have an iPhone 5S which is like 5 years old and so it's constantly like running out of storage so it's very problematic for me, I cannot store really anything on it. And I had promised myself to buy a new phone by the end of 2018, I didn't do it and I'm gonna do that in 2019. The next thing is a mattress, simply because our current one is kind of bending in the middle, so like we're constantly sinking when we're sleeping in there and I value my back a bit too much to actually not purchase a mattress for a whole year. Next thing is a gym pass. I, I have one that's paid until the end of August 2019, but if I'm staying in Edinburgh, I will probably buy a new one that is gonna last me until the end of the year. Next thing is gifts. I am quite fine with buying gifts for other people, but I'll make sure to ask them what they want so I'm not just going out and browsing things because it's gonna trigger me to shop. I'm just gonna ask them, okay, can you please tell me what would you like to receive? That makes it a lot easier for me to give gifts and to make people happy as well. The last thing that I'm allowing myself to buy is experiences, so both things like traveling and going on a spa, but also massages, getting my hair done, manicures and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna obviously go and overspend on that have money every week, but I will allow myself to spend on experiences because they generally make me feel very good and will hopefully help me to not feel bad that I'm not shopping. I also have like three kind of tricky situations that I wanted to address because this was actually what Hannah advised to think about all the potential kind of great areas, great points that may be a bit tricky and to try to address them as quickly as possible. The first thing is buying stuff when traveling. I will allow myself to buy a travel magazine when I'm flying because I'm a very nervous flyer. At the same time, when I arrive to the destination, if something happens to my items, so for example my flip-flops break, my hat is kind of scrunchy and not actually useful, I lose my sunglasses, if something like this that's going to prevent me from actually enjoying the holiday happens, yes, I will allow myself to just replace that item, but I'm not going to buy any sort of like souvenirs, clothes from a place, something like that, because I just don't need it. The next situation is receiving gifts and I am perfectly fine with receiving gifts. Of course, I don't want anyone to just come and give me stuff just because I'm on a no-buy year. But if someone has like an occasion and wants to give me something, I have started a wishlister account that will have all the things that I'm currently willing 
going to buy but I'm not going to because I'm gonna not buy it. And finally the last freaky situation is uh, being a sustainable fashion blogger and receiving PR. Now I'm a very very small blogger so not really a lot of brands have contacted me yet but if a brand wants to send me stuff again I will be fine with it because it's kind of a gift but I will only accept maybe two to maximum four items from a brand for reviewing purposes simply because I don't want to clutter my home and I don't want to go into the cycle of just overspending even if I'm not buying the stuff myself. Now to the final part what I hope to achieve with my no buy year. The first thing is obviously to get control of my finances and finally have some savings. Thanks to being a PhD student on a PhD salary right now, I do have a bit of money saved in my emergency fund and honestly this feels better than any sort of shopping because I know that if something was to happen I do have some money to fall back on. The second thing I want to achieve is really for myself to be able to not be triggered by different people, by brands and by marketing messages to shop. And I just want to have a strength in myself to be able to recognize when I'm shopping when I actually need something, when I'm shopping just because I'm bored, sad or happy. Finally, I, I want to develop myself another hobby and that's why I have started this YouTube channel. You know, like in the last few years I've really wanted to start a YouTube channel but I haven't because I thought it's so time consuming. And I'm not saying it's not, but just doing a little mental calculation, I think about uh, shopping probably about 10 hours per week. I either think about it or go online shopping or go physical shopping. So if I took those 10 hours per week, that's 500 hours in one year. So I could have really filmed probably 20 to 50 videos in that one year that I chose to not do because I was thinking about shopping and I was out shopping. Yeah, so this kind of evaluation really made me realize how much time I actually waste and I'm not being productive. So I just really want to get rid of shopping as my hobby and I want to develop new skills and do something that I actually want to do. Okay, so that was it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I would be really, really glad if you subscribe. I have amazing plans for this channel and so many new ideas that I want to film. You can also find me on my Instagram and on my blog if you want to read more about sustainable fashion and how I'm styling my thrifted pieces. That's it for this video. See you next time. Bye!